a really interesting project that's being launched uh, across two Montreal campuses. And we'll speak with the uh, leader of that project coming up in this half hour. We will play some Dylan, the Nobel laureate, Bob Dylan. Um, what do you think about the fact that he has been named the, uh, given, awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature? That was just announced today. It's quite controversial. We're going to speak to some Montreal musicians a little bit later on in the show, but I always love to hear from you, and our text line is always open. 514-566-9066. I'll give you that forecast in a second. Let's check your drive. Here's Jeremy. At the intersection of uh, neuroscience and arts, is there an orange cone? Is there a... Probably. <laughs> just like... <laughs> do we have a detour plan for that? We'll tell you about the plan after there's an emergency issue there. Uh, we're looking at some uh, volume issues on the roads right now and it continues uh, to be a problem. The Champlain heavy between Wellington and the 132. There's a stalled vehicle looks to be at the 132. Uh, already the Decarry south its length all the way out to that height of the Champlain on the south shore. Further volume between the 30 and the 35 on the eastern townships. Otter route inbound Champlain tash to the 132. Delays on the Decarry north its length. Villemary West at Saint-Jacques, right through to the Ville-Saint-Pierre interchange, west of Fenelon to Pass Horses and over the Gadipo from Saint-Anne de Bellevue with volume there. And over the Tacho Bridge between uh, Pancourt and uh, Vaudreuil at the Sour Dorian, if you will. Uh, we're looking at volume on the uh, eastbound 20 from 43rd to 1st, 20 on ramps to the outbound Mercier. Uh, 13 South Airport Tunnel to the 20, volume on the 13 North, Hickmore to the back river bridge, then Chemin to the 640. Laurentia North from the 40 to Gouin, then St. LZR to the Mill Il Span, further volume from the 640 to Pass Blainville. 640 East is Grand Allée de Monte Le Sage, the 440 East heavy between Monte Saint Francois and the 825. 25 South Anjou to the tunnel inbound to Montreville to Anjou, 40 East, Cote de Lies to Christophe Colomb, La Caldera, Anjou, Marianne to the 640, and the westbound side of the 40 Sioux, the 215s, and Cavendish to the 13 merge at this hour. Now, the traffic report before your business report with Paul Haversrude within 10 minutes here on Home Run. Thanks very much. Jeremy Zaffron from the Traffic Center. 11 degrees. It is cool out there. Uh, wind is westerly at 35 kilometers an hour. There's a frost advisory in effect. So, for Metro Montreal, Laval, La Chute, St. Jerome, most of our listening area, actually, uh, Vaudreuil Soulange, frost advisory, pretty much everywhere. Uh, what Frank says is probably Probably not in the city, but maybe in an outlying area. If you've got some tomatoes or zucchini, he says, put them inside. Uh, that's tonight. So he thinks uh, here in Montreal to go down to about 2 degrees. Tomorrow, sunny with cloudy periods, a high near 12. It'll be a fresh day, but sunny. Uh, Saturday, mainly sunny, a high near 16. And Sunday, sun, clouds, isolated showers, light showers in the afternoon on Sunday, but much warmer with a high near 19. It is heading up to 20 minutes to 5 o'clock. You're listening to Home Run on CBC Radio 1. I'm your host, Sue Smith. Well, what do a science lab and an art studio have in common? Well, a lot, if my next guest has his way. Christian Seltzer is a research associate in neuroscience at McGill University. He's also the founder and director of the Convergence Initiative. It's a project that brings artists and neuroscience together to learn about science and create art. And he joins me in studio. Hello. Hello. So tell me about the Convergence Initiative. What is it? So this uh, is actually a cool idea where we are putting neuroscientists from uh, the brain program at the MHC McGill to work together with artists from Concordia University. So the idea is that they go with short talks about what they are doing right now in their uh, PhD or master degrees or postdoc, and they talk about this to the students of art. This actually happened yesterday. Right. So, so uh, they give like a five minute presentation yes, on their research. Exactly. So we have several artists there, like more than 20 or 30, that were very interested in following these talks to use them as an inspiration to create pieces of art. But the idea is that we have actually a, a cross-talk between both disciplines, so it's not just we show them what the science that we do, but actually they get totally incorporated in what we are doing, and we receive also information from them and instruction from them, and we also give information from our side, so it's a huh. pretty cool thing. Wow. Has anything like this ever been done before, but as far as you know? As far as I know in Canada, no. I look a lot to see what something like that to use as a reference, but it never happened before. It's something like that a little bit in the UK that's called Our Neuro, uh, but it's missing all this part where we actually have the artists included in the, in the neuroscience process and the neuroscientists in the art process. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely uh, unique for, for Canada and for other places. More. Isn't it? It's crazy in this day and age, but the, the, whatever they call them, silos or whatever, right? They're really separate science and art. Uh, for most of the people, look like it's separate, but actually, science and art have been together for 
tons, tons of time. And if you look in, in early draws from Ramon and Cajal, he was actually describing neurons with beautiful techniques of painting. He was, he was also a photographer. And the same thing happened even way far away with Da Vinci. And more in recent days, you have several scientists also that also have uh, the, the site for, for art. And it's a lot of art influence today in what we do in science. And it's using a lot to, to do uh, a communication of our findings to the general public. That is one of the goals that this, this project also has. Mm -hmm. To make it more accessible. Exactly. So why, what, where did you come up with this idea? Why did you get so interested in this? Well, um, I'm, I'm a PhD, so I, I, I have a, a PhD degree, but I'm also, I, I used to do a lot of art by myself before, and I'm also a graphic designer. I used to play bagpipe, I used to have a band, we used to do uh, music events, I used to work also, also in graphic design. So I'm, I'm being always very interested in, in the communication of both areas because I think that they have more common things that people think. And when you put these two areas of society to work together, the result for society in general is actually really, really good. Mm -hmm. So we should um, push for this kind of initiative work more because of this way we bring important information from the neuroscience fields to the people and at the same time we give a venue to the art for being more accessible yeah. to people. Cross-curricular. Uh, so I understand that the response from the Concordia Fine Arts pro program was was pretty enthusiastic, right? You thought you would get a couple of people and you had over 80? Yeah, actually that, that was really cool. When, when we started the conversation, everybody was very excited, but we were like, uh, let's hope now that students come to, to this. So uh, the, the opening for, for the, the project uh, the, the first call started and then in one or two weeks were already more than 80 people interested so the professors at Concordia have to close the, the call wow. because it was so many people and right now it's a, it's a process of selection going on uh, for, for a ride with, with uh, the selected artists that will be working with these scientists. And what kind of art projects are you expecting to see? I mean you were talking about painting but I guess the fine arts project has uh, program has everything right sculpture and yeah this is one of the most fantastic things so we are planning to go with all this uh, and a very nice venue next year in in the can association uh, canadian association for neuroscience that uh, they're very kind to us to offer the venue and to support us in the project so the thing is when we started with all oh, okay this will be a nice painting or sculpture but concordia have a tons of different areas of art so we are planning to have people that is in dance theater oh. performing arts digital arts uh, even pottery ceramics and, and fabrics are included in the program photography uh, filming so is for us has been also a, a striking experience because we actually want that we want to have all different point of view to see how they see neuroscience and how this can be interpreted all this complex project that we work in the labs to the public outside so we're expecting to see a lot of things i i don't know what they will come out from this mm. but i'm pretty sure it will be extremely interesting for everybody mm, all right well we'll look forward to see the results of it thank you so much for coming thank in you. thank you very much for having me my guest in studio is christian seltzer he's the founder and director of the convergence initiative it's a project that brings artists and neuroscientists neuroscientists together to create science inspired inspired art uh, in a collaborative way. Uh, they have a great website as well, just uh, put in your search engine, the Convergence Initiative. It is 14 minutes to 5 o'clock and we are playing Bob Dylan today. He has